Well, Clyde, thanks for talking to the Raw. Um, first up, what's your view of the, the Wallaby squad that they've picked for the uh, Scotland and Wales games? Yeah, it's a strong squad. You know, I think there's, there's been a lot of debate about the depth in Australian rugby, but clearly, when it comes to picking the top 22 or 30 players in the country, we've got more than enough depth. Uh, certain positions, obviously, injuries influencing the selections. So you get Quaid and, and those guys. And I, I think. Um, I think for the most part, you know, we, we should go into the series of strong favourites. There's been a bit of talk about the Welsh in particular, and obviously the last game of the World Cup that we played them was pretty competitive. And I think over the last few years, every game against them has finished with either side being able to win it after that minute. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting series. Who do you think should be uh, captain in, in James Hall's absence? Uh, well, I think the most obvious candidates, candidates are uh, Will and David. So, I mean, those are the ones that everyone's talking about. I don't know David personally, but obviously highly respected amongst the group. Um, Will, I know, I've had some interaction with, really, really strong leader, in my opinion. All the guys who, who've played with him speak highly of him, and obviously his form, I mean, he's one of the premier players in the position in the world. So, uh, you know, it's hard to say any of those two would do the job. I'd probably go with Will. And how do you rate uh, uh, Scotland? Obviously, I think the last time we played them, it was a pretty embarrassing loss in, in Murrayfield over there. Um, yeah, what's, what's your opinion on the Scots? I don't know a lot about their, their squad, to be honest. I think that game, I think it was about nine. Yeah, it was, yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, it was an anomaly. Yeah. A couple of missed goal kicks, I think, yeah. Yeah, everyone sort of points the finger at Gitz. It's sort of been the, uh, the MO for a lot of people, and I think team didn't get us in a position to win that game as comprehensively as we should have. You know, when we were we play Scotland and the say that's without any arrogance, we should be the favourites whether it's there or at home and this, you know, we should go into that game confident. And they've picked the squad they've picked is a huge amount of debutants. Is there any danger of complacency do you think picking that many sort of because obviously there's so many injuries as well, the amount of players, experienced players that are out, um, you know, your Rocky Elsons as well as uh, Hallwell and yeah. Well, I think probably the opposite, and I don't think you're going to have any issues with complacency with, uh, with new, new guys in. First time they were in New Jersey, or one of the first times. So probably the only, uh, you have the opposite concern is that guys will be overly nervous and struggling to control their emotions. Um, a lot of them will be their first test match ever, a lot of them will be the first test match in Australia. So I think, you know, as long as they treat it as any other game, try and contain themselves as much as possible lead on some of the senior players for guidance, I don't see a problem. And Wales are the Six Nations champions and they've been out here I think for, for quite a while. They seem to be taking this this series very seriously and you know want to put one over. Yeah and I, and I think it's really good to have a, a genuine tour again. We don't, we don't see much of that anymore. Uh, so, so that's going to be interesting to see. But again you know, I think there's no reason why we can't do the job there. Uh, I think it's quite handy if we've got a lead in uh, of a game first but and obviously the compressed week the first time round is going to be a bit of a challenge for the group, but you know, again, I think uh, the best 22 that Australia can pick can beat anyone on their day if you go into this game as far as can. And Robbie Deans has caught a lot of criticism lately, you know, since since the World Cup. I mean, what's your view of him as a coach? Well, I think he, the, the thing that people need to bear in mind, and probably he hasn't got enough credit for, is the number of young new players he's brought through that are now genuinely uh, World 15 type contenders. You know, we've got a number of guys that we never had before he, he got involved in Australian rugby. And there's probably a trend before he came along to hang on to some guys past their side like that. Um, and I think what he's done is really make sure that we've not just got good players in one of 15, but we've got a second line now that is putting pressure on, on incumbents, and that's what he wants. And it's something that uh, I think we're not just seeing the benefit now over the next couple of years. The, the Swarby squad, the thing that excites me most about them is they're only going to get better uh, and they're really quite good. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they progress. And he deserves a lot of credit for that. I, I don't have anything coached by him, so I probably can't comment uh, more specifically than that. Sure. Uh, have you uh, got an opinion on who should succeed him? Or, you know, they're already talking about you and Mackenzie being the next, the next Wallabies coach, kind of been waiting. Have you got a, a view on, on who you think should take the job? Well, I think. Um, you know, you understand the job with the Reds, it's taking them from wherever they were low on the table to, to being premiers and uh, I think for the next couple of years at least we're going to have a core component of the Wallabies that come out of Queensland, so there's a lot of 
lot of reasons why you're doing that way. Um, and he's obviously knows Australian rugby. He's been involved as a as a player for 50 test matches um, and as an assistant coach for I think around 50 test matches and yeah. now a lot of Super Rugby and international experience at front. So it ticks all the boxes. Highly regarded by the players. Um, you know, I think he's managed to get the best out of another young, relatively inexperienced group of Queensland. So yeah, I, yeah. It doesn't seem like you make a bad decision going that way. And the World Cup last year, how how did you see the, the tournament you know, compared to, to previous World Cups, standard of play? I thought the standard was really good, you know, I think across the board, particularly sort of towards the finals. You know, I thought the, the game against South Africa was a high standard in terms of intensity. Uh, I thought the All Blacks were incredible in the semi-final. Uh, probably the best eight minutes of rugby in the last four or five years any team's played. Uh, I thought the final was a, a bit of a disappointment, not from an intensity or from a, uh, I guess, occasion perspective, just from the quality of the rugby, and it may have been as a result of the week before from the Kiwis' perspective. Um, but I thought overall it was, it was a high standard. I thought disappointing for Australia. You know, I think uh, we're to a team on that Saturday against all the that obviously were peaking, playing, and we were just a bit off, probably as a result of the week before. Um, yeah, but I think where we stand now, globally, as number two in the world, is probably a f fair reflection of where we're at. Not too far away from putting some serious pressure on the All Blacks. Just looking, I guess, at um, the standard of Super Rugby this year, how, how have you seen that? Well, I think it's been the best competition we've ever had, to be honest. I really think it's been, in terms of having teams that are evenly matched, you know, the number of games, A, that have been won uh, by teams much lower on the table in their competition, the number of games that have finished within a couple of points, the number of you know, really, really close finishes, it's just been indicative of that. Uh, you know, I know when I was playing, I used to look at the, uh, the draw for the year and sort of circle a few teams and, and know that there was five points, you know, especially if you played them at home, and that no longer is the case. You know, anyone can be there, anyway, and that's what you want, and I think it sets us up nicely for our finals. And your old team, the Brumbies, have you know, they've been killing it. Have you been surprised how well they've, they've gone? I have been surprised. You know, when, I guess, the through the crap final stuff, you hear about their pre-season starting in July and all the little work that they were doing, they were really good signs. But even that said, I didn't expect them to do as well as they had. I don't think anyone did perhaps not even those in the group, uh, if they're honest. So I think it's it's been really good to see. You know, they've, they've leveraged the things that they've got going for them. They've got a massive capacity for work. A lot of enthusiasm from a lot of young guys. Uh, the, the whole culture has shifted down there. Uh, yeah, there, there was a lot of need for change, and that's now happened. Uh, and the, the players are taking ownership for their performances, and this is across the board. Uh, and just shows you what you can achieve in a very short space of time. Uh, you know, with, with what Jake's done and with his assistants like Laura, which has been outstanding. Uh, I think Steve Larkin has been fantastic. Uh, I think the playing group have really brought in done the work. What impact do you think Jake's had? Oh, obviously, yeah, he, he's been significant. He's got a track record of doing a similar job. You know, when he took over the South African team, they were really struggling. He managed to turn them around fairly quickly. Uh, you know, I think with Jake, he, he focuses on a few simple things and makes sure that he does those really well. Uh, and you can see that coming through more than the problems at